So welcome to our service this morning. It's Paul is going to be leading us in our worship today. So without more ado, I will hand over to Paul. Thank you, uh, Adrian. Well, good morning, everybody. I don't know what the weather's like in Northampton, but it's uh, raining here at the moment. Um, we put some washing out yesterday. <laughs> Um, and it's still on the line from yesterday and unlikely to get dry, I think, for the next day or so. So uh, we shall see what happens. I just want to start by um, committing our time now to, to God in, in prayer, just to bring ourselves quietly before God. Father, we pray now that we might... Uh, just still our hearts and our minds. And Lord, in the silence, just acknowledge your presence here with us this morning. Father, we know we live in a busy world where noise and interruption seem to be the order of the day. But Father, we know that if we want to grow, Lord, in your ways, we need to be still and to listen to your voice, to acknowledge your presence, to follow your ways, to hear your word. We pray, Lord, this morning that as we meet virtually, Lord, together this morning, it might be no less a real experience, an encounter with each other, and with you because you lord are the source of all life be with us father today we praise lord your son jesus we thank you lord for his salvation that enables us lord to worship together in his precious name be with us father bless us amen our first uh, hymn this morning is Break Thou the Bread of Life. Jesus uh, referred to himself in a, in a number of ways. And one of the uh, descriptions that he gave himself was that I am the bread of life. And we're going to be listening now to a reading from uh, John's Gospel, which uh, explains in a bit more detail what Jesus meant when he used the words, 
I am the bread of life. And Lois now is going to read to us from John chapter 6. Right, so it's verses 24 to 35. Once the crowd realized that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into the boats and went to Capernaum in search of Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? And Jesus answered, very truly, I tell you, you were looking for me, not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him, God the Father has placed his seal of approval. So then they asked him, what must we do to do the works God requires? And Jesus answered, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. So they asked him, what sign then will you give that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. And Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, it's not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, always give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Thank you, uh, Lois, for that uh, that reading. Um, we'll be having a look at those <coughs> words in a, <coughs> a few moments. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, before we do that, though, um, as you know, Sandra and I have uh, recorded a few of our uh, video sketches uh, periodically, and uh, we thought today it would be quite nice to uh, share another one with you. And this one's entitled, as you might expect, The Bread of Life. What are you watching? They brought back the old Hovis advert on the TV. I haven't seen it for years. Nah, I don't stop remember on it. Be Obviously, before my time. Ooh, it was great. Oh, they were the days. All this. Yeah, it was grand. Eh? All of this? That's a wholemeal bread, isn't it? I quite like wholemeal bread. It's healthier than white. Well, to be honest, I'm not really into all this uh, healthy eating stuff. Give me a jam donut any day. Oh, well, look, fancy that. I've still got this jam donut I've fat and, and finished from earlier. Cool, I'll have a bit more of this. Mm. Oh, you eat like a toddler. Mm. Here, oh. here, have a piece of kitchen roll. Oh, lovely. Anyhow, when's the baby due? Look. <laughs> <laughs> There's jam everywhere. Wow. I suppose I could do with uh, losing a bit off my tummy, I suppose. Anyway, doesn't wholemeal bread fill you up? Do you know, I could just eat a nice wholemeal sandwich now. A bit of uh, bread, a bit of uh, ham and cheese, perhaps a bit of salami and some branded and pickle. Don't you ever stop thinking about food? Well, no, not really. Well, you have breakfast, don't you? Then you have a, a mid-morning snack, uh, then uh, lunch, then some cake in the middle of the afternoon about four o'clock, then your dinner about six, and then perhaps in the evening a few cheese and biscuits and some chocolate.
the afternoon about four o'clock then your dinner about six and then perhaps in the evening a few cheese and biscuits and some chocolate well yes i suppose you are so you eat them and then they're all gone well is that the way with food pretty much with a notable exception well, what do you mean the bread of life the bread of life did Paul Warburton's make that? No. Oh, it must be Alison's then. You know, the bread we've now taken out. No. In fact, you won't find any of the typical things in this bread that you would find in regular bread. Well, what is it then? Is it some kind of high calorie, high fi low calorie, high fibre no sports bread or something? Well, sort of. Well, well, well what then? Jesus called himself the bread of life. Ah, yes. The taste of paradise. No, I think that's bounty. Hmm. Anyhow, in John's Gospel, after Jesus blessed five loaves and two fishes and his disciples fed the multitudes, he went across the sea towards Capernaum. Oh, yeah, I remember that part. That was when he walked across the water, didn't it, wasn't it? Yeah, right. But when he got to the other side, he told people that they were following him. They had to go the long way round the lake, mind you. Anyway, Jesus told these people that life is not about getting a free meal. But on the other hand, he said not to get wrapped up on working hard just to get food that perishes. Hmm. Well, what kind of other food is there anyway? You'd have thought with all the preservatives in things today, food would last for centuries. The kind that brings eternal life. Hmm, I'll see. So, does that mean... Um, what? Well, does it mean that the bread of life is a life-sustaining relationship with Jesus? Yes. Like that, like that Bible reading app thing you've got on your phone. Uh, what's it called? Our Daily Bread. Ah. It's like the manna in the desert that the Israelites received. Spending time with God to work helps you to grow in your faith and strengthen your spiritual life. Hmm. Oh, I see. Hmm. That's, That's good, better it? than a Christmas dinner. Oh, yeah, I suppose it is. I suppose it's even better than a jam donut, isn't it? Yes. The bread of life. Hmm. Actually, I suppose I ought to start uh, reading the Bible a bit more. Perhaps I'll have a go read with, your, uh, with your daily bread Bible app, shall I? Though this still has many times more wheat germ than ordinary bread. It's as good for you today as it's always been. We're going to uh, listen to uh, another song now called I Am the Bread of Life.
So I want to uh, spend a few moments this morning just uh, thinking about that uh, passage that Lois read to us uh, earlier. And it's quite uh, important words of Jesus because uh, earlier on he uh, explains the, uh, the feeding of the 5,000 and then goes on in this part of the passage to try and sort of explain a bit about, uh, about what it means. And it's quite life-changing teaching this and things which ought to really have a profound effect on the way that we live our life. A few things I just want to draw out of this, uh, this story this morning. The first thing is that Jesus knows everything there is to know about us. You know, it's quite scary, I think, when you think about the uh, way in which uh, our privacy at the moment seems to be being eroded in lots of different ways, doesn't it? You know, there's a great increase in surveillance and uh, things like that, closed circuit TV all around the town, facial recognition, biometrics, digital currency, and all that kind of thing. And I know in some communist countries, they've uh, even used these uh, things to kind of track people every moment of their day and use it to take money off them and to uh, shape the way that they live their lives. And people have no privacy at all whatsoever you know the kind of a sort of a social credit system that they use and in those countries it's not normally for people's well-being at all but you know on the other hand Jesus knowing all about us is a completely different kettle of fish he always does things for our own good for our own well-being I'm sure you remember Psalm 139, which reminds us that as our creator, God knows all about us, our actions, our thoughts, even the before we say things. But although he knows everything there is to know about us, he loves and cares for us. And he's really concerned not only about the things that we do now, but about our eternal well-being, the things that will live on and on. And of course, in this passage, when uh, the crowd went in search of Jesus on the other side of the lake, Jesus challenged their motives, didn't he, as to why they were following him. And it turned out they were only following him because of the miracles that he had performed on the loaves and the fishes and I think they were hoping to get some more food off him he said to them he said you seek me because not because you saw the miracles but because you ate the loaves and you were filled you know we should never forget that Jesus is the same he never changes and he reads the secret motives of all those who call themselves Christians you know he knows the reasons why we go to church, what our priorities are, what we're thinking. And about you, I think the last 18 months have really made me think about what's important in life and what's not. Not only about things in general, but about my faith as well. And I often wonder sometimes whether our worship and our church life has collected a lot of clutter along the way. And, you know, we like to have lots of things to kind of help us worship. But at the end of the day, our faith is about our relationship between ourselves and God and our fellow Christians. I remember when Colin Pye came to uh, talk to the deacons some while ago, he describes the way that we currently do church as inherited church i.e the things that we've been doing for the last sort of 100 years or so and you know when you look at the way church is today it probably hasn't changed that much over the over that period hasn't it but jesus wants true believers and 
He wants people that are worshipping, not just for what you can get, what we can get out of God, but what we have to offer him. That's what our faith is all about. And Jesus says, I don't want you just to worship me just for those reasons. I want you to seek food that lasts. He's saying that, you know, don't work for food that spoils, but work for food that endures to eternal life, which I will give you. Now, I don't think he meant, you know, we've got to give up work and hope that he's going to sort of send us some kind of Red Cross food parcels dropping from the, the sky. But, you know, work is part of our life here on Earth, isn't it? When Adam and Eve were banished out of the Garden of Eden, you know, one of the things he said, you know, your lot is to toil, isn't it? To work. And that's the way that you support yourself and provide food for yourself and for your families. And of course, Jesus was a worker too. You know, when he grew up, he worked with his father, Joseph, in the, in the carpenter shop in Nazareth. The disciples were workers, weren't they? They were fishermen. And Paul, the apostle Paul, he started off life as a, a tent maker as well. And I think Jesus is saying to us here, we need to get our priorities right. Life isn't about earning lots and lots of money and acquiring tons and tons of possessions and wealth and things. It's more than that, isn't it? You know, so often we pay more attention to the things that waste our time than the things that will actually build up our spiritual life. You know, think of the time that we spend watching the television, you know, on the on the on the Internet and things that we do. And the small amount of time, if we're honest, that we actually perhaps spend reading our Bibles or praying or, or worshipping with others. Jesus wants us to take stock of our lives. You know, when we do things, do we think of things in the light of eternity and the bigger picture that. God has for us and not just on the, the here and now. Jesus also said that we need to feed on him. And I think Jesus is really challenging the crowd here when he's talking to them about him being the bread of life. And these words are just as relevant for us today as they were for that crowd 2000 years ago you know i've lost count over the last uh, number of months of the times that people have said things like we are living in challenging times you know have you heard you know that's a phrase isn't it that a lot of people say a lot at the moment but really we are living in challenging times at the moment we are living in end times times when we don't know when jesus will return and in these times, I think it's even more important that we spend time listening to Jesus and following the things that he says. You know, it's our eternity that's at stake at here. You know, we often say the words, um, the Lord's Prayer, don't we, in our, our services? And it's quite easy to kind of gloss over the words. And particularly when we say the, the words, give us this day our daily bread we normally just take it to mean you know the food and the, the things that we need to kind of see us through the day but i think if we look at those words in the light of the words that jesus is saying here in this uh, this passage that he is the bread of life i think it kind of puts a, a much greater meaning a much deeper meaning onto those words he wants us to ask for not only our physical food, but for our spiritual food as well. The food that will never spoil, the food that goes on and on and will build us up. I don't know about how you eat your food. I know some people tend to eat food very quickly. They bolt it down, don't they, at the rate of not. So I must admit, I'm a bit like that. I tend to eat food a bit quickly and then I get sort of indigestion because I've eaten it, to, eaten it too fast. 
But on the other hand, there's people that spend a lot of time eating their food and seem to take an age over it and savour each, uh, each mouthful. I remember when I was, uh, was little and we used to have my, uh, my grandparents round for, for Sunday lunch, my granddad used to take ages to eat his dinner and we'd sort of ready to have our, our dessert and he was still sort of even only halfway through his first course. But, you know, we need food, don't we, to survive? And too much food is as bad as too little. And I think that's the same applies to our spiritual food. Jesus wants us to feed on him through his word. And it's, the, it's through his word is the way that he reveals himself to us today. You know, one of my favorite Psalms in the Bible is Psalm 1. And it says this, listen, listen to these words. And I think it kind of links with what Jesus was saying here to the disciples on the, uh, the Lake of Galilee. It says this, it says, blessed is the one whose delight is in the law of the law, who meditates on it day and night. That person is like a stream planted, tree, tree, a, tree, a tree planted by streams of water, which yields fruit in its season, whose leaf does not wither, and whatever they do, it prospers. And that's the question, isn't it, for us today? Do we delight in God's word, in the bread of life? Do we meditate on it day and night? You know, do we spend time just sort of chewing it over and thinking about the words that we have and just letting it kind of sink down into our souls? You know, if you haven't picked your Bible up recently, Perhaps now is the time to do it. You know, perhaps today start with this reading from John chapter 6. Or, like we did in the video, to find a Bible reading plan. Start with something that we can get our teeth into, something that's easily digestible, something that Jesus can just connect with us in a very simple way. If you're as old as I am, you'll probably remember the old Sunday school song, don't you? Read your Bible, pray every day if you want to grow. And I think those words are still true very much today. And by doing those things, it not only helps us to develop our personal faith, but it also helps us to develop our corporate worship as well. You know, the Greek word for church in the new testament is the word ecclesia and it means a gathering or an assembly it doesn't mean a building you know when we talk about church we often say the building we think of the building don't we but in the new testament the word for church talked about a gathering together an assembly of god's people and when we gather together as a church, I think it's like when people gather together to hear the reading of a will, don't they? They listen very carefully and attentively to see what the words of the will are and what the, the benefactor is giving out to the recipients of that will. You know, we must fight, I think, daily against the sin that we encounter in this world, the devil, and, and like those who fight for liberty. We must make fight for life, that eternal life which God promises us. And these are the things that we must walk in if we would be find, found in Christ and find him. I am the bread of life. Whoever believes in me will never hunger. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Amen. Let's, uh, let's spend a few moments in, uh, in prayer, shall we? And just pondering upon those words of, uh, of Jesus. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Father God, we pray this morning that 
we might let those words just uh, sink into our hearts. Father, we acknowledge that we are so often consumed and preoccupied with the things of this world, with our daily worries and our daily cares, and of trying to be successful and uh, not concentrating, Father, on the bigger picture, on our eternal destiny, which you are concerned about, Lord, for each one of us. We pray, Father, that you might uh, enhance our time of worship, Lord, in these coming days. Help us, Father, to have a deeper and a more spiritual relationship with you. To let go, Father, of those things which get in the way of us coming before you. And Father, we uh, acknowledge that we do live in a, a dark and a, a difficult world, Lord, where there are many things that uh, get in the way of our time with you. We pray, Lord, for our friends who are going through difficult and dark times at the moment in our world. We pray, Lord, for those who are have health problems, Lord. Those, Lord, who are unwell at this time, those that are isolating, those that are waiting for uh, uh, operations or treatment, Father. Those that have got family members, Lord, that they're concerned about at this time. Those that are finding the things of this world, Lord, just too hard to bear. Well, just pray, Lord, that we might just remember, Lord, that you are the bread of life and that you will provide and fulfill our needs. We pray too, Lord, for our fellowship as we uh, plan to uh, move to worshipping back, Lord, into the building. We pray, Lord, for the uh, deacons as they meet next week to think about these things and to plan a strategy, Father, for working toward that goal. We pray for wisdom, Lord. We pray, Father, for your will to be done, that we might seek, Lord, your wisdom in the scriptures, that you might break the bread of life to us and uh, help us, Lord, to unpack it and understand it. We pray for our world, Lord. We pray, Father, for those who are under oppression, those who are living, Lord, in a world where food and bread are just not readily available. We pray, Father, for those that we know in our own country, Lord, that are having to rely on food banks and other things just to make ends meet. Father God, we just pray now that you might come and send the bread of life to all people. That we might have that kind of life, Lord, that you so earnestly desire for each one of us. We ask these things, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's say now the Lord's Prayer together and thinking particularly of those words, give us this day our daily bread. Our Father in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Our um, 
final uh, song today I've chosen is Matt Redmond's The Heart of Worship. And there's a bit of a story behind this that uh, the church that uh, Matt Redmond, who wrote this song, went to, things were getting a bit, people, they were getting a bit bogged down with a lot of clutter in their church, things that were getting in the way of truly worshipping God. And this song was written with, a, with that in mind, to strip away all of those things which hinder us from truly worshipping God, the bread of life. When the music fades, the heart of worship. When the music fades, all is stripped away, and I simply come. Longing just to bring something that's a word that will bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry. It's all about you, Jesus. King of endless worth, no one could express how much you deserve. Though I'm weak and poor. Every single breath I'll bring you more than a song For a song in itself Is not what you have required You search much deeper within Through the way things appear You're looking into my heart Let's just be quiet for a couple of moments and uh, just reflect on those words before we say the grace together. Let's, uh, let's just be quiet and let God speak to each one of us, to what he requires from us.
Father God, we pray that we might uh, come to you, know your will, and that your will may be our will, Lord, in these coming days. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's say the grace, shall we, together. May the grace, grace of our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ and the love of God, God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you, uh, Paul, for bringing us God's word this morning. It's going to be <coughs> much to think about. A few notices. The prayer on Wednesday and Friday at 11, as usual. Um, as Paul mentioned in the uh, service, there is a deacons meeting this week. It's on Monday evening, tomorrow evening this week, and we would welcome prayers as we look to opening the church. The church will be open next Saturday morning for private prayer, as we have been doing on the first Saturday of each month from 10.30 to 12. And next Sunday morning, we are going to have a hybrid service at 11 a.m., which is being led by Sue Foy, who is somebody from the uh, Methodist circuit. We've not met Sue before, so that will be new for us as Sue comes to lead our worship next Sunday morning at 11 and that will be in church as a hybrid service but although there has been relaxation and uh, we will be allowed to sing and uh, things like that we are still being very conscious that some people won't want to uh, come into church so nobody should feel any pressure to come to the physical building next Sunday morning if for any reason you feel uncomfortable about it we will be on zoom as usual um, the deacons will be considering precisely all the arrangements and uh, what separations we still need to maintain uh, but uh, we would ask that uh, you pay and you feel the uh, need some other people so we would ask that you still bring a mask to church with you um, you may not feel that you need to wear it but others are still very anxious so we would ask you to uh, remember the anxiety of others and uh, what we will do there um, but there will be as I say that hybrid service so the uh, will be the same as we've had before with the YouTube songs and everything else uh, for next week and then uh, we will be looking at how we are going to progress into our new church services. I'm not going to say our normal church services, uh, I'm going to say our new church services in the future. Um, we, we're not saying that you have to book to come next Sunday morning but it would be helpful if you let, is it you, Catherine, that they need to, yeah, if you let Catherine know whether you are intended to come into church, just so that we have an idea of numbers. Um, we won't be serving tea or coffee afterwards. We're still really, uh, sort of leaving that to one side, but uh, uh, we will be there. So if you are able to come, you'll be very welcome. If you want to be on Zoom, you'll also be very welcome to be with us on Zoom. And although normally it will be King's Kids on the uh, first Sunday, because it's uh, August, uh, they're on their holidays from King's Kids, so uh, they won't be there. So do you want to say anything else, Catherine, about the service? No, it's just helpful to, if you let me know, then I can at least put you on the list and put your phone number on, because we still need to keep a, a list of people for test and trace. So um, if we haven't got you on the list we'll have to write you on there when you come so it would be easier if I did know but that doesn't preclude anyone to, or sorry just whatever the word is that doesn't <laughs> coming on the day if that's if you just decide on the day that's fine but we do just need to keep a note of who's actually there for test and trace still is it 11 o'clock it's at 11 o'clock it's still at 11 o'clock 
next week. Um, that's because of Zoom and what we've been doing with Zoom. And for example, Paul is still taking part in our services and he's still got commitments at Kettering, which mean that uh, it's difficult for him to get with us before 11, isn't it, Paul? Impossible. Uh, yeah, imp impossible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, yeah. But uh, again, that's something the deacons are going to be considering yeah. about. Uh, need to think through, I think, as we go forward. Yeah. yeah. So I don't want you to just to kind of stop everything and rearrange everything just for, for my benefit. But, uh, you know, for practical reasons in the short term, it might be helpful. Mm. Has anybody else got any notices? Did you want to say anything, Lois, about your garden parties, tea parties? Well, just that weather permitting, um, next Sunday afternoon between two and half past four, um, there will be refreshments available in the garden at 178 Obelisk Rise. Okay. Weather permitting. I can't see anybody else indicating they want to say anything. So in which case we will uh, give ourselves greetings and we will go off to uh, enjoy the rest of the, uh, the day, whatever the weather may have for us. <laughs> <laughs> what rain go to Kettering, I think. Also. Yeah, Is it not raining there? Not, not, just, raining not just at the far. minute. It has been it's and it will be. No, it still is. It still is. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Seems to be very localised these last mm. few days in rain. We've had some people have had tremendous storms, and others have had no rain at all. So, uh, but yeah. even across Kettering, it happened. Bit, bit, bit. I left home one day during the week, and it was dry here, no rain. I literally drove about half a mile to my friend, and the road and the her end was raining and soaking wet, and I couldn't believe it. I phoned Paul up; it still hadn't rained here. Yeah. And that's only about half a mile away. Yeah. 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 Okay then. Well, thank you everybody. Good to have seen you all this morning. Yeah. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Paul. Bye. Thank you, Adrian. Bye. 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 God bless Janet and Bob. <laughs> Good luck, Janet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll about you. tomorrow, Janet. Yeah, yeah. yeah we'll be yeah. thinking of you tomorrow. Yes, we will Imagine. be. Bye. 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 Bye.